spoke with Scott about uh, proceedings that we could commit to if necessary, but I think we've got form which we're without. Go quote. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it. Super. spoke with uh, Scott Delure based upon his conversations um, with you regarding uh, the Lawa property. Um, so I'll, I'll make it part of my report as well, but just uh, for clarification's sake, it is, it is expected that, that that the area, once it is restored or somewhere in process on its way towards those ultimate restoration goals, that it will be controlled public access. Um, so controlled public access. So there, there's a gate, it's locked, um, that the, the, the staff from Los Angeles World Airport would open that gate, um, you know, at some point in the morning and then close it again, and, you know, just like a regular park in that regard. Um, I, but we have not had a full um, discussion as to the nature of of what they want to see there. But they understand that that is one of the, one of the things that they're shooting for. Oh, okay. So it does have that. We'll have that aspect. That's good enough. By the way. Entirely yes. different subject. Uh, let's see. Last week, you know, I wrote on the uh, uh, regional council for SCAG. Yes. And we were both on the stormwater, uh, the LA County stormwater, looking at efforts and so on. Thought it was important to probably at some point get in front of. I'm sure we can get, uh, get in front of the commission to talk about where we are. Stormwater is a big issue. Absolutely, yeah. and it's and it's the funding you need. Yeah, it's this is the funding. I'm I'm on that study group for state, and uh, okay. uh, and anyway, so some not too distant time. We ought to try and do that because part of it, a lot of the players that would need to be up to date on what we're trying to do are going to be in that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, baykeeper, I'm waterkeeper. Um, that sounds great. So if we know that it does with you, I will try. I've got enough. Sounds good. Thanks, John. Um, do we have anybody on the phone? Yes, John. Okay. Um, I'm Jeff Lewis. I'm the Director of Public Works and Public Works. Thank you. Um, I'm Jeff Lewis. I'm the Director of Public Works and Public Works. Thank you. I'm Jeff Lewis. I'm the Director of Public Works and Public Works. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I'm not. Okay. I well. need a pen. Do you have a pen, extra pen? It's pure with chalk. I think I've done my tune up. It's all, it's all yours, Chair. All right. Let's call the meeting of the uh, Santa Monica Bay Restoration Authority Governing Board to order on Monday, February 8th. Uh, and uh, welcome. Those of you who are here to participate. And uh, let's go around the table and make introductions and then the audience as well. Uh, uh, we can't, no, sorry. Yeah. Uh, John Seibert, uh, Chair of, of the Authority and uh, City Council Member Mallow. Uh, Tom Ford, Executive Director of the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Commission. Timothy Whitman, Bar Supervisor, Sheila Kiel. I'm Rich Nagel, I'm the alternate rep for. Lori Gray for Plus Mason and Welcome. Hi, and I'm Frank Wu, uh, Senior Civil Engineer at Lake County Department of Public Works, representing okay. Director Gail Barber. And Thanks, uh, Frank. Oh, Frank, yeah. <clears throat> and ma'am? I'm Jeanette Vosberg, representing myself. Okay. Marcelo Villa Gomez, staff for the commission. Yeah, and we lost our one other member, but and the she'll be back shortly. All right, do I hear a motion to uh, accept the agenda? So moved. So moved. Okay, a second? Second. All right, all in favor? So 
Aye. All right. Public comment. Uh, we lost our public commenter. I think so. Yeah, she went out to the car for a pen. Who was that? Uh, Patricia McPherson yeah, is here. Okay. Um, I don't know that, that we've even received a card from her yet, but no, she had we'll one there to fill out. But you know, okay. I, she needed a pen. Okay. Well, we can go ahead with the approval of minutes and move back to item three if that's all right. Do I have any uh, comments on the minutes? Oh, okay. Virginia. Yes. Uh, Patricia. Patricia, sorry. Yes. Uh, all right, so yeah. we're in public comment. We'll go back to that. We don't have a timer, but you got three minutes. Are you starting that now? Is that what you're saying? You want me to fill this out later? Uh, yeah, um, you, you can fill it out. All right. As long as we have it for the record. Um, I have, sorry, we're, it's being recorded, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, my question is, um, I have a question and I'm asking for a comment back from you if I can have it. Um, is, can this authority describe for the public record um, its precise involvement with the Army Corps of Engineers relative to the Bayona wetlands? And can this authority describe the state agencies to the public today any and all agreements as it relates to Bayona wetlands? And I'm hoping that you have a rather short answer on that um, because this involves the Bayona EIR EIS process and what I'm trying to establish is what role does the authority play in the EIR EIS process with the Army Corps of Engineers and um, in addition to that that I've already stated are there any new MOAs, MO, any agreements of any sort uh, which you're aware with either the Coastal Conservancy and the Army Corps of Engineers and or with the authority um, and how is the payment being made to the Army Corps of Engineers for that EIS work at present? Some time. I don't know if you can well, more. my question is, will that question be answered, um, or is it simply a matter of um, do we always have to put in a Public Record Act request for the information? I mean, you're well aware that there's already an ongoing uh, Public Record Act lawsuit against the Commission, and we are getting all kinds of different answers with regard to the Commission's role. Um, and we are establishing with other agencies the record of the commission and the authority. I mean, as we all know, a couple of years ago, we were before the Santa Monica, uh, or before the uh, Board of Supervisors, with them specifically asking Shelley Luce, who stood, stood up there and said, yes, it was the commission that was asking for the EIS. So now we know that the commission is basically backing out, saying we had nothing to do with that whatsoever. So we're trying to get some of these communications established as to who is doing what and what role is the authority even playing here. All right. Thanks, Patricia. Uh, when you have a problem? Yes, Scott. Yes, um, just, just so we're clear, I think Patricia can probably hear me. Um, for instance, that that public comment period is not a time for questions and answers, but it's a time for public to make comments. Um, what I would suggest is that perhaps, and I don't think a public record act request is necessary, but that you or you and I have arranged time to 
meet with her or talk with her to answer her questions specifically because it's not appropriate at this point in time. Do you have a time that you could do that then? Absolutely. And that you will actually call me back and set up such time? Of course. Okay, just for the record, we have asked in the past, and certainly various members have asked in the past, and it, it's not been able to happen. So that would be appreciated to actually have some information that we didn't have to Public Record Act request to get a response. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, our executive director has said that he would, so I would assume he's going to do that. Okay, I look forward to that call. All right. Likewise. Okay. Thanks, Patricia. Um, if, you, if you mind, would mind, Patricia, you just hand that to Marcella, please. Thank you. All right. Now I ask a motion on approval of the minutes for the October 1st, 2014 meeting. Any amendments or changes? Hearing none, I hear a motion to approve. I'll move it. I'll move it. All right. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Now we're looking at the approval of the 2015-16 and 2016-17 uh, Santa Monica Bay uh, Restoration Authority budgets. Uh, all so, right, Tom, this is you. Yes. Um, so I'll give you guys a, 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 a brief sketch of what uh, we've got um, in the agenda. Uh, for you, uh, which is going to include a couple quick words about what the authority is. Uh, the four projects uh, at this point in time that are being funded uh, through opportunities uh, made available by the existence of the authority. Uh, and then we do have uh, detailed uh, budgets uh, for each one of those uh, projects uh, broken out for you um, in a, in a task-related um, manner. Uh, so categorical description of the work uh, that we're looking to undertake uh, with these uh, funding opportunities um, with uh, looking for, for your approval uh, today. Uh, and if uh, if the authority were to approve uh, this, this budget today, then it moves forward to the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Commission for its approval, and then we move on to the county uh, board of supervisors thereafter for their approval. Um, Scott, um, did I get that order correct? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm still have my civics lessons every now and then. Uh, so uh, we've got the, the, the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Authority uh, created by a joint exercise of powers between the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Commission and the Los Angeles County Flood Control District. Um, it was required, uh, the agreement requires that the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Commission and the LA County Board of Supervisors review and consider approval of the SMBRA annual budget uh, following approval by the SMBRA governing board. So that's why uh, we're up first. Um, in this case, uh, we have four uh, budgets uh, for multi-year programs, um, and uh, we are asking at this point uh, that we approve uh, these four projects uh, and their associated costs for the remainder of fiscal year 2015-2016 and the upcoming 2016-2017 um, fiscal years uh, for the authority. Um, of the four projects, uh, the, the first one that you'd find in your packet is a description of the Los Angeles World Airport's Dune Restoration Project. Uh, so this is uh, work uh, that uh, the authority uh, would uh, enable uh, for uh, the folks at the uh, Bay Foundation and at the Los Angeles World Airports to continue uh, to provide services that would allow for the establishment of native vegetation on the on this 48-acre complex uh, off of the runway at LAX. Um, there, uh, in this project description, uh, the you see that there's a uh, elements uh, of this landscape that are uh, in the ownership and responsibility or operational responsibility of the flood control district. Uh, the work in itself is bringing community-based members into that area, uh, allowing for surveys by professional biologists to occur, um, for geospatial analyses of the results of the work, which are intended to uh, have at least 70% vegetated cover of native uh, plants, um, not only for their preservation, but for that of 
uh, wildlife, including the endangered El Segundo blue butterfly, um, which is uh, found in the area. And oh, can I get ask a question? Sure. Yeah. The uh, the area we're talking about is the uh, at the area at the end of the runways, which used to be a residential area, right? right? The one back when I was out here in the fifties. <laughs> But, okay, right. So, uh, so there are still uh, some existing infrastructure yeah, you know, on that dune complex. Uh, the, there, there are still several roads, roads remaining. There are flint foundations remaining. Um, there are uh, storm drain, uh, 21 of them, uh, from, uh, from what I've learned from the flood control district uh, at, at, that they control in that area. Um, some of the work that we're proposing is to also uh, uh, help Los Angeles World Airport's maintenance crew and the removal of more of those roads and foundations and a few of those things. Um, and uh, this 48-acre complex is only one part of that entire 300 acres that exist off the runway area um, that is in control of Los Angeles World Airports. They have to meet the FAA uh, regulations on there, so it's a, it's a it's got a lot of overlapping uh, requirements on top of this property. Uh, long story short, um, that is what we are uh, attempting to do uh, in that landscape um, with uh, support uh, from Los Angeles World Airports to enable uh, that work uh, with an expectation and understanding that uh, the foundation would also continue to try to find alternative sources of funding to further that work. Yes, Rich. Mr. Executive Director, thank you for that report. Um, so this is native uh, vegetation. Uh, what's the uh, what will be your plan to irrigate the native west? Is it going to be on a natural flow basis, or is, is there is there a, a system where you need to periodically irrigate? Yeah, to, so there is uh, irrigation uh, that we would normally, we try to time the planting uh, with the wet season so that there's a minimal need for that. Um, in the first summer, often after we get those plants established, uh, they may require additional irrigation at that point in time, but uh, it is our hope that once we're through a, a full annual cycle of these seedlings, they're on their own. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, Thank you right. My pleasure. Uh, and uh, it is uh, expected that uh, once these improvements are in place, that controlled public access to that 48-acre parcel would be made available. Um, uh, so it's important to note that uh, the, the public uh, we have the ability to enjoy um, these benefits of this work directly. Yeah. Has Coastal Commission weighed in on this one? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, there was an amendment to the local coastal plan and all of that as part of this okay. um, with a few oversight from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So you're asking for $160,000 over two years, 170 over two years? I'm not sure I'm sure it's tracking with you. Yes, sir. That's done. Um, it's technically one. Uh, 73, I think, over the two years. Is that? Yes. Really? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, the second uh, project that we have for you um, is uh, related to our voter education program. Uh, so this is another multi-year grant. Uh, this comes down through uh, the California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways um, to the SMBRA from the state. And uh, the point of this is to engage the boating community and giving them uh, both infrastructure, in some cases, to access, uh, but specifically the act, the education as to where these infrastructure exist to assist them in best clean boating practices. This, is, this isn't a new program. This is no, not a new program. This, this is an ongoing program. program. And it's been, uh, by the way, uh, well received, uh, and boaters really <laughs> appreciated this. Program. So having used to have a boat there, but not anymore. You got wise. Yeah, I got wise. <laughs> yeah, my wife. But it's been, been around, around for several years. years. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it has. It's been around for quite a while. It's, it's an outstanding program. Um, so we have uh, helped uh, folks uh, make contact uh, with uh, mobile pump out services for their uh, for their sewage, uh, or assisted. Um, any number of municipalities with installing pump outs for sewage. Uh, we just put in a bilge uh, water oil separator down in the Oceanside as part of this project so that bilge water from the boats could be 
um, disposed of properly, separating the oil from the water, the water then going on to the uh, sewage, uh, the POTW in that right. case. Here in true plant. Um, no, this is down in Oceanside. Oceanside. Got it. Right. This one itself is, is this? So this really is over there. Right. Uh, the program we, is by way. I got it. Anything, any major differences over previous years? No major differences over previous years uh, reflected in the tasks uh, or the budget um, that you see before. Thank you. Uh, the uh, third project that you see uh, described uh, herein uh, is the Wetland Protection Development Project uh, Grant uh, WIPDIG, uh, which is a grant that we receive uh, from the US EPA. Um, we compete for that source of funding to come to us, um, which uh, allows us um, to build upon the systematic and regional uh, monitoring programs to determine the health of existing uh, wetland complexes um, and to inform us as to the results of uh, management efforts of those existing wetland complexes in Southern California. Um, this specific project is trying to address a lack of consistent approaches to intensive assessment limits and our ability to share information between projects. Um, so there's been a lot of ongoing data collection in a number of areas in wetland complexes throughout Southern California. Uh, they've used different uh, methods, different frequencies for their sampling. The purpose of this specific uh, allotment of funding is to allow uh, us to collect all that data, sort through it, figure out where it works together well, where it doesn't work together well, and then come up with recommendations as to better improve coordinated monitoring uh, throughout Southern California moving forward. Um, there's a reference in the second paragraph uh, to uh, how this ties in with the Bay Restoration Plan, um, which uh, is in part developing and implementing long-term monitoring program for the Bionic Wetlands, so it's goal number seven, milestone 7.1B of our Bay Restoration Plan. Um, this is also consistent in advance of the mission of the Flood Control District through development of monitoring program and collection of monitoring data uh, critical to the preservation and restoration of natural habitats located on or hydraulically connected to the flood control districts, flood control system, um, Bional Wetlands and Bional Creek. Um, so that uh, should give you folks a, uh, an understanding of, of what that effort uh, entails. A lot of data collection, a lot of data, data analyses, production of reports and coordination um, with uh, other researcher, researchers and organizations up and down Southern California. Is this, is this, this the San Juan Bay or is this the wetlands? Throughout all of Southern California. Uh, at this point in time, I'm, I'm not certain that it includes Santa Barbara County, uh, but uh, Ventura County, uh, Los Angeles County, Orange County, San Diego County, okay. um, with a number of different parts. Are you the one that um, houses the uh, data? That the, yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, so uh, the inclusion of these data into geospatial analyses has been something that's been greatly enabled in the last uh, 10 years uh, with the software that's available. So a big part of this work is often translating that into those geo-referenced uh, databases. So this, this includes uh, rooms like Del Mar and Carlsbad, yes. Oceanside. Ormond. Yeah. Yep, Ormond, Magoo, uh, Carpinteria Marsh. Uh, further south, we've got uh, There are several in Ventura. Right. Yeah. It, uh, the car not, marks one. They stop it not go to area in one of them. They, they kind of one representing one from each of the area. Oh, and, okay. and, and the, uh, um, the goal is to actually use it. Okay. Okay. Selectively sampling rather yes. than uh, and, and comprehensive. Right. And I mean, we can't afford it. Yes, no, I understand. But that's and, online, and, yeah. yeah, but the result will apply to every one. Do you, do you map in time the um, formation or loss of the wetlands complexes in, in spatial time as well? So you know, for 10 years, are you able to put the mapping on how to elicit whether those wetlands being lost to environmental factors yeah. or other factors? Yes, Rich, I, I think part of, part of the goal of this project is to assemble that picture sort of holistically in Southern California from the Tijuana National Estuary Research Reserve out in Oral. So some of the some of these programs or wetlands uh, have that type of detail, others do not, and then really this effort is to try to put it all together, have that all assembled 
um, moving forward um, so that we can better track those, those changes. Um, and the uh, budget for this uh, project um, is close to 100,000, 999,937 um, for uh, year one and um, 99,937 for year two. Um, so in that regard, um, no construction, none of those one of those types of issues to come in. Um, and uh, the last of the uh, four that we have in front of us um, is the Malibu Lagoon Restoration and Enhancement Project Monitoring Grant. Um, so the uh, number of parties contributing uh, to the restoration of Malibu Lagoon uh, over time and for the planning of that. And uh, this uh, grant allows um, the Bay Foundation, um, a number of other um, subcontractors to continue uh, the monitoring work uh, that's required to inform the permit uh, that uh, the restoration work um, was undertaken uh, under. And uh, so in each one of these cases, uh, we'll have an annual report that's produced uh, with the substance of those, uh, of those data collection years. And I'm trying to find the specific uh, call out here, pardon me for a moment. Um, so this is uh, responsive to the biological and water quality monitoring plan and vegetation assessment and monitoring plan. Um, so focused on water quality improvements and benefits and tracking uh, what's happening with the vegetation complexes that have been planted there and are, are still being maintained um, by community base and by the state uh, parks folks principally. Yeah. A couple questions. Uh, you're also monitoring uh, fish as well? Yes. Okay. There are, uh, you know, there are conflicting reports that uh, we hear regularly in city council meetings in Melbourne. I imagine that's true. Right. I can take down uh, through the actual line items on the budget, which will help uh, explain um, uh, what's happening here in that regard. Um, so we have uh, the field surveys under task number three. Uh, the lab analyses in the lab um, for those water quality samples, uh, the lab analyses for the benthic macroinvertebrates, so right. testing uh, the presence, absence, and diversity of uh, insect larvae and uh, other invertebrates uh, that we would find on the bottom, um, a continued uh, monitoring of uh, birds via avian monitoring, um, the fish surveys. I don't you don't see a line item in this budget because those are services that are being paid for directly by state parks yeah. um, to uh, Rosie Daggett and uh, her team. Yeah. Is that electrical fishing or how do they actually? Uh, they use same nets typically. Same nets. And, same nets. Uh, and cameras. And cameras. Okay. So they, they float around uh, in a kayak and stick a GoPro on a stick down into the water um, to try to assess what, okay. what fish are in the area. Yeah. And, and of course we continue to get reports from folks saying that the, the lagoon is a disaster. Everything I've seen so far is not. That's not true. Um, I, it doesn't. It doesn't look like a disaster to me. The data from uh, the previous uh, annual uh, reports would not suggest that it's a disaster. Yeah, and um, we're going to continue to inform ourselves uh, and everyone else that's interested by con uh, continuing this work if we if we're allowed to um, to make sure that we do uh, figure out what's happening uh, in the lagoon what, what kind moving of forward. Are there? What, what sort of fishers are there? Ooh. Yeah, so I'm, a, I'm an ocean guy, not a lagoon guy. Uh, but uh, mullet, uh, steelhead, trout. Uh, I've seen, they've seen a couple of steelhead. Not right. Them. Yeah, bigger ones. And uh, tidewater. Tidewater gobies. There's specific. a lot more tidewater gobies than they have before. And I think there's some uh, killifish, uh, but I'm not certain about that. Certain. Uh, but we do have a uh, this next annual report that's coming up uh, for this project. Um, I know is under uh, production right now. Um, so it should be out in the following months and be available for, uh, for again, for everybody interested in the project. All right, Tom. The, uh, so the, the sum total of the awards uh, from these two years uh, budget cycles are uh, for fiscal year 15, 16, uh, we're looking at a total of uh, $535,000 uh, $135,474 and for fiscal year 
1617, a total of 529,311. Uh, so these funds um, are all coming through uh, grants uh, that uh, have been applied for um, or agreements that are in the works uh, in the case of uh, Los Angeles Port Airports. So the, the funding will be there if these grants come through. Uh, be Correct. If there is no grant money, then there is no uh, project moving forward. Right. Uh, so we're not in, we're not encumbering liabilities, um, and then expected to find those those monies elsewhere. Okay, so if I said the airport project is funded by a grant or by the airport. Uh, at this point in time, we have uh, some grant monies that uh, we've already uh, that have already come in, um, namely through the state coastal conservancy with an explore the coast grant, uh, which is uh, specifically targeting underserved youth to get them out onto the site and to assist with that work, uh, and that uh, the Los Angeles World Airports and uh, the Bay Foundation at this point in time um, are working through a, oh, I'm sorry, it'll be with the commission, working through an MOU um, in order to uh, try to enable the transfer of those funds. Mr. Chair, we have to make a motion for the budget for the two fiscal years. All right. I'll second that since we seem to be present folks here. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The budgets are approved. Any member comments from governing board members? Good thing to comment on issues not on the agenda. I don't even have any. That's. No, <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I'm slipping, Scott. Uh, How did you? Wish to bring this up, uh, John, as a time that we spoke about before we convened. Oh, yeah, it's it's certainly something that uh, is is important, I think, to bring to the commission, and that is the uh, the effort that's going on jointly with the League of California Cities and Contract Cities Association. It's a, uh, uh, it's a ten member, I think, uh, study group working with SCAG, uh, Southern California Association of Governments looking at stormwater funding uh, and not only the process of funding but what sort of things we ought to be doing and a good part of that is trying to get the message across that uh, stormwater is not a, uh, a problem you need to deal with as much as it is a utility just like uh, groundwater uh, the reservoirs water that's being treated here. These are all, should be treated as utilities and we need to find a way to make that happen. I think there's a really important message to be able to carry forward to the commission in a later meeting to uh, talk about how we can get that point across. Yeah, Rich? Yeah, so th this is a topic that uh, is raised by frequently in our district yeah. by stakeholders. Um, I do think, Mr. Chair, uh, I, I agree it's an important subject that should be careful review, but, uh, but the other dimension of that, um, as utility goes, uh, you know, there's, there, there's a notion out there that, that stormwater um, can have a substantial play in additional water supplies for the region. And there are certain areas in, in the region that's true, but there's certain areas that's just absolutely not true. I think, I think part of that is coupling coupling the notion of where stormwater can be captured at a volume that's significant enough to make a difference. Um, because, there, for example, this whole region here, we capture all we want, but we can't put it in the ground. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm well aware of it. And, and, uh, but, but that, you may be, but others aren't. No, I know. And, and that's that's a really important artifact for folks, because it's, it's, it's largely out there marketed as a kind of across the board new water supply, of course, and it has areas where it can be very, very helpful. Yeah. And a lot of areas where it's not. It's, and um, we encourage... I happen to live in a city where it's, it's not. not. And we encourage things. Um, we offer a free rain barrel program for residents to capture rainfall off your rooftops. Great. Yeah. Um, that being said is the unfortunate part, except for today and this week, um, when you're capturing that water, it's usually the rainfall season. You yeah. only have a rainfall season for four months. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of the least time you need. 
that water for outdoor use. It's Take the 50 gallon ones. Yes, but it's still, it's something we should do, it's something we should encourage, but I, I it, it is out there almost being more sold as a water supply benefit than it is the water quality. And that's that's where I think we want to make sure we, we raise those to the appropriate level. That's exactly what we've been talking okay. about through all of this, which is, you know, where is it appropriate? What could okay. we do to increase, for example, using storm water to recharge aquifers in the San Fernando Valley and places like that? Uh, we, I will just say one more thing. We've, we've explored, um, we're working on a funding measure um, potential. If we get to the stage where it's, it's public enough, we'll bring it back to this commission. In other words, it would be an opportunity for entities that want to seek local money for stormwater recovery and capture, um, water quality benefits, that would be a new, a new source of revenue for local jurisdiction. So, it would take a constitutional method, so we're we'll ruling on The well, good part of the problem is are the things that are in the stormwater, particularly stuff off highways where you've got zinc and copper. And no question. And, and uh, how do we deal with that? And so when it becomes part of you know, statewide or regional-wide transportation uh, funding, one ought to take into account the fact that you've got to deal with the water that runs off and where it goes and what happens to it. So that's a good part of this whole effort. Good. Right. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty comprehensive, but I think it's just important that we get it in front of a bunch of folks who've been thinking about this, like at the commission, mm -hmm. and who are concerned about it, and that includes the environmental organizations as well as the agencies. Yeah, the county did a great job um, mapping out in LA County the strategies, right, for yeah, they're, stormwater. They're part of this, they're part of this effort. Fantastic. So the city of LA just did a stormwater master plan? Yeah. For the city of LA. Yes, right. we're That's also quite, dealing quite with them. <laughs> Excellent. And, uh, and of course, they are both represented on the commission. Very good. So that's the reason I think we ought to bring that up. All right. Hearing no other uh, issues, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. We don't need a second. That's done. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to call you right now, okay? okay yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Tom, since how we're here for the meeting, 
meeting is supposed to last for another 20 minutes. Um, can well, you answer some questions? Um, I'd rather not, frankly. Uh, well, for instance, even the thing that you have for the airport area, the money that it would be allocated, um, the monies that were allocated uh, through the commission once before for the building that's directly across from Hyperion, where the commission meets, right on the beach, that whole, that whole area was supposed to have been revegetated with native plants, and yet there is no sign that it has been. Um, and yet, it was the commission that had the authority for oversight, and by way of the commission would be this authority, because this is the only place that money comes, doesn't go to the commission. Where is the oversight for putting the plants in for that facility? Because they're not there. Right, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with that project, so I'll have to look into it, and I can get back to you. How, how um, I don't understand how you would be unfamiliar with that project, considering you've been there all along. I mean, it's and it's been brought up before. I, I, I can only tell you honestly what I know and what I don't know. And at this point in time, I'm telling you I don't know that project, so I had to look into it so I can get back to you with an answer as to whose okay. project it is, whose authority it is, who on, control on, the project. All those. That would be good. Um, the. So this the is agenda the, for today also um, discusses Biona wetlands, and yet you have stated that the commission, which is the authority, is simply the commission theoretically and the county, and you have stated that the commission has nothing to do with Biona. So what is this proposal to include Biona? How does that figure into stating to the public via the commission, that the commission is no longer, or hasn't ever been, because it's different answers at different times, um, according to the lawsuit and our own records, that the commission hasn't been involved with Fiona. Right. So why would there now be a proposal to have money for the authority to deal with Fiona? Because that's the commission. Are you? I'm writing down all of your questions. Does that make sense? I mean, it doesn't make any sense to us. Okay. We'll try to, we will endeavor to continue to try to make it clear to you. Um, so right off the bat, can you tell me the uh, relationship um, with the authority with the Army Corps of Engineers and the ongoing EIS? We, we, we already addressed that. No, no, no. You, this is we're not we're outside the meeting now, and I'm asking you for the time because we've got 20 minutes left. Rather than setting up another time at some other time, we've got this opportunity to be able to discuss these things now. Well, I would like to go with what we had already discussed, which was that we would set up time so we have that conversation. If you have more questions for me, I'm happy to get them down so that I can give you best answers the next time we're on the horn or subsequent to that to make sure that follows our I don't even think that's unfair at all. Well, it's a project that's been long-standing. I would think you would know these things off the top of your head, right? But, um, and we have all this time, so let it be duly noted that you don't want to talk about it.